Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We are back here today with another very special episode. We got another triple threat going today. It is myself, Shant, Dan the Man, and the Kamish. How are you guys doing? We're doing just splendid. I mean, I'm doing just splendid. How are you doing? Oh, just dandy. Why would you ask? Why would you ask us such a loaded question? You can find fully loaded on the WW. No, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, even that plug isn't going anywhere. But why would you ask us something like that, really? <laughs> when there's a lot of things that can be going on with us. In the well, there dark, are a lot of things in the on. deep dark brevity of our souls and our hearts and our minds that we can't literally function to find reasonable and rational people to discuss the problems of what goes on in our daily lives. It's, just, it's, what a it's, it's almost somewhere. like we're approaching Judgment Day. Another pay per view you can catch on the uh, WWE. No, wait a second. Now, see, if the WWE had that type of deep creative thinking, we would be in a much better place right now. <laughs> Yeah, but I can literally pull up a thesaurus and say a bunch of adjectives about what the hell's wrong with me. What? And I get that. Uh, It's just like the WWE crowd. What? Anywho, so... Not during the Silver Dome era, though. Anyway, welcome back. (sighs) Welcome back. Um, If you listened to our recent episode about the... Women's roster or lack and thereof. the Sasha Banks Naomi uh, walkout. Then you heard some plugging for this episode, uh, where we are going to basically break it down and simplify. Did you say break it down? Break break the walls down. Um, oh, I was thinking DX. Oh, break it down. Um, so we're going to simplify the roster and we're going to basically look at it as what do you need. In order to make the show work. What does everybody want? And so, we talked about... So basically, we've got a couple of different categories here. We've got our main event talent, who are the people you can shuffle to be in your world title picture. Uh, Your mid-card, which uh, we broke down into ten people with the thought that you would still probably have the two mid-card titles. And you could maybe just focus on that between the two shows. Sounds like one member of our group... Just kind of shoved them all into one little barrel. Uh, then tag teams, uh, women, uh, single stars, and then women's tag teams, which we will get into more with how um, thin that category is. Look, people, there's so little to work with that we're going to figure it out. We're trying to figure out. Yeah, you Hell, the WWE's trying, trying to, figure to figure it out. out. Exactly. Good Lord. <laughs> You're going to hear some far-fetched explanations for a couple of things, I can they, only imagine. They might actually work. Uh, but, fellas, let's jump right into uh, our main event segment. So, with sure, this, Seamus. We broke it down uh, again. We broke it down as three faces, three heels. We didn't do any tweeners. Um, you can obviously have some level of flexibility in your mind. But, go ahead and give your... Uh, six main event stars who you would shuffle. And the example I always use with this is like the Armageddon Hell in a Cell. Because you had, I always forget who all was in there, but Undertaker, Rikishi, Kurt Angle, Triple H, Stone Cold, and The Rock. Any of those two guys could have feuded for the title, give or take Rikishi, at any given time. And you believed it. You bought in. And so that's what seems to be missing from today's roster is that you have Roman and then that's there's it. only a couple of guys who are like genuinely believable and you don't want to watch Roman and Drew for seven months. So that's what we're getting here is uh, essentially this is GM mode with a twist. And so you get to choose with direction. <laughs> And so you get to choose your your stars, you get to choose their alignment, and then you can give some additional explanation to why. I was going to say, since there's the three of us and there's a lot of superstars to go down, I would say for each superstar, maybe give like a 20 to 30 second explanation as to why you put them where you put them, why you choose them as a face or a heel or a random, just to kind of get the episode flowing. Um, 
do is there a particular order we want to go in? I I don't care. You can kick it off. All right, let's kick it off. Break it down. Uh, so for the main roster for the men's, um, the six that I chose was Seth Rollins as a face, AJ Styles as a heel, Drew McIntyre as a face, uh, Sami Zayn as a face, Cody Rhodes as a heel. And then Tommaso Ciampa as a heel. My very quick explanations for each respective superstar. Seth Rollins, we've seen him before, especially uh, my favorite was the Monday Night Rollins era, where he was every single on on every single Monday Night Raw, every single pay per view. It wasn't for the main title as a face. He could have a match with anybody. At Mojo Raleigh, with one point, he he gave a banger of a match. Seth can do anything, so I'm gonna put him in there. AJ <laughs> St- <laughs> what? Isn't that Seth's line? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, number two, AJ Styles. He can go as a heel because I feel like AJ makes it work a little bit more as a heel than as a face. This guy is well established. He can do anything at this point. He can work with anybody. He's one of the two, three people other than Roman that you can buy in as a main level performer. Drew McIntyre, you know, the ultimate comeback story. He was, used to be in 3MB. He was kind of a mid-card guy. Went away, came back, improved his craft. Now he can... The, the guy is one of the few entertaining people to actually watch. You believe everything he's saying. You believe everything he's doing. So there's that. Sami Zayn, I truly believe that this guy should have been left as a baby face because he could have been the biggest baby face um, in the last two decades with the push that he was getting in NXT. Um, and he's also another guy that can have a great match as we've seen with Kevin Owens and Shinsuke Nakamura among others. So the guy can work number five recently, Cody Rhodes came back. Um, again, Cody, I think is someone that you can put him in there with anybody. He's going to give you a great match. He can talk on the microphone. It's very natural. You believe it. And with the family heritage that he has in the business, it's easy to buy into very last one, Tommaso Ciampa hasn't really been on the main roster for too long, but in NXT, he was one of their key players, especially as a heel. You saw all the things that he was doing with Johnny Gargano. Um, I love the guy. I love uh, his matches. Very believable. So that's my six on the main roster. So you and I, were we, we did it originally, and then we... we invited you to do it too so we we had a little bit of crossover in here um so i'll I'll throw mine in there next i've got i had aj cody and drew as my faces and then i uh there's a i don't remember if we had like official confirmation on roman taking time off and possibly reducing his schedule to be more of a brock lesnar when we did this originally so i just i just put edge in as like a sub uh, but my original picks were Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, and Roman as the heels. Similar thought process as far as like, well, for me, uh, people I feel are, especially nowadays, naturally drawn to AJ, Cody, and Drew because they can see a certain uh, amount of themselves yeah. in these people. Because AJ is sort of a, he looks a little for lack of a better term, a little rednecky, even though he's he's from Georgia. Well, even though he's from Georgia. Um, Cody, you've got the belt in. He is Dusty's son, and everybody loves Dusty. He the feed. And then he leaves, and you have the literal comeback story where yeah. he is now the, he's the, the prodigal son returns home. Right, yeah. And then Drew is, again, he comeback left. Story. Yep. He came back, he changed his whole thing, and now he's genuinely a believable individual um and then for these heels i gave theory i threw theory in there because i think that he perfect timing is kind of a randy orton-esque entity in that he's not the biggest guy but he's really athletic yeah and i think that he could kind of fill that role within this grouping but so yeah you basically can shuffle any of those guys wherever you need to so those are mine. Uh, Kamish, go ahead and take it away. All right. So you guys didn't throw me a curveball, but it kind of came like late notice to like yeah. do this. You guys have worked on this for a while. I'm just going to go into this, how I said it. I think we're on unison as far as a main eventer who would be a face, which would be Seth Rollins. Yeah. Because, look, I'm not saying I don't like, oh, it's exactly what I'm saying. 
I don't like this heel gimmick. Yeah, I don't. It's a gimmick it's to too me. Too much. The 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 flashy outfits, the the cockiness. It's it's just too much. Just get him back to how he was before this transition yeah. and turn. Hell, if I hear burn it down the original way he used to play and he just came out, I think it would be a great turnaround for him. Cody, I would have him as a face just because, again, he, he, he came back to where it's technically home for him. Yeah. You know, he wants to bring back the lineage of the WWE um, to get out of the whole superstar, bring the idea of wrestlers, yeah. wrestling back into it. Lineage. Um, you might not agree with me on this person, but I think it's the direction that I think his partner is going. I would put Riddle as a face, as a main eventer, just because he's done a lot as, as I'm sorry, but him and Randy as a tag team, they're mid-carding it hard right now. And it's like, he even said it himself, like Randy said it to him, like, you're doing my moves, you're, you're literally emulating me. Yeah. I got to one-up you at one point. I think that's like kind of like a slow push to put Riddle into the main event card at that point. My heels... It would be Roman. That's the start. Not just because he's carrying both belts now, but it's just the idea that, you know, he is carrying one show while making appearances on the other with the bloodline. Um, If we could get him out of this stupid Ezekiel Elias thing, it'd be Kevin Owens. Like, just, just look. But what about Ken? Oh, God. Ken Kennedy? Ken Owens, his brother. Ken Shamrock? Ken Dolph, for all I care. Um, if we get... Give... Uh, uh, oh, wow. If we gave Kevin Owens a better storyline, a, a better reason to be a main event heel, I would buy into it again. And this is my toss-up for the third. Uh, it'd be between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton but back in that main event card. Because, let's be real, heel Randy Orton is amazing. <laughs> No matter what era he was from, the guy could sell you on being a heel. Hell, what was it? WWE Evil? Was that that current show? Like yeah. he's he sold it. He showed Why you. He, he showed you. Yeah. You and then with Drew. Don't get me wrong. I love Drew as a face. He's more of a badass when he's a heel. And like I would think, if you put him back into the main event card. Get him to finally get his WWE win with a crowd. With a crowd, yeah. And just see that turn with the belt. Give him a good heel run with that WWE championship. I think it would be something worth watching. But those are my main eventers. So you you mentioned Riddle in there and how yeah. you, you think he and uh, Randy are kind of floating in the, the mid card right now. And that that's going to segue into those for me because that's the main reason that I put Seth here. I know you guys put him as a main main event star. But I basically put Seth and uh who are my like anchor men? It's probably Seth, KO and Champa uh in my mid card as your cuz there's still tiers, right? There you've got your like upper mid card, you've got your slightly lower mid card, but I feel like if you focused on it the way that we we're kind of brainstorming here, I think there'd be a better uh, balance. So I had Seth Ali, uh, my boy Ezekiel, uh, and Ricochet as my faces. So you're not walking with Elias anymore? No, I'm, I'm letting Zeke speak. Uh, and then I have Champa, Owens, Priest, and Xavier Woods, strangely enough, as my heels. And then I have, and then I have Miz and Finn Balor as my uh, flips, my tweeners, um, because I think I think people kind of would get on board with cheering a face Miz. Like if you actually did it, I think people would kind of get a kick out of it. I feel like Miz has been a heel for so long that like it would take a solid minute to try to be like. Okay. But I know we always talked about Cena and like, oh, turn Cena heel. And maybe it wouldn't have worked. Maybe it would have. But I think that Miz has that, I think Miz has that charisma and you even kind of see it in him responding to, uh, I think it was AJ, right? 
complimenting him. Yeah, yeah, on and, the yeah. Yeah, um, AJ, AJ Styles coming out saying <laughs> Miz is is the best, one of the best heels in the in the entire industry. I think it. I think it's true. He's one of the best heel characters characters that we've seen in a long time with like consistency. With uh, like I I don't hate the Miz. I appreciate. Him. Yeah. And there's not a, a lot of people that I genuinely say that about. Like I got Damian Priest on here, and I'm he's too I, fresh to I'm to kind of wishy washy on. Yeah. Him. But like you're not sold on him just yet. Yeah. Well, because it's gonna take time. I mean, you know, it's. But uh, to bounce off of that for a second, um, someone had put up a interesting picture today of the Miz and MJF, and mm-hmm. them possibly having a match. Which, if we can have an interpromotional match at a <laughs> SummerSlam or whatever, I would love to see that match. I mean, there's also just the talk of MJF's contract coming up, and maybe yeah. maybe he jumps ship. I think he's created enough buzz where, you, like, WWE might actually bite to kind of get that's, the yeah. second coming of Cody. But would you really take away that much from MJF? I mean, he sold that heel character for years. Well, that's now. the thing is that he's, I, he might be too I, cuffed if he comes to W because he can't say half the stuff that he says on half? WWE. <laughs> Three fourths of what he says he can't say. Well, I mean, WWE. you know, if you add Kurt Angle into the mix. Um, so, uh, so then you read off all your mid carders. Yeah. Um, so I'll quickly I'll make this quick. For my mid card, um, I have Mustafa Ali. Um, I have him as a random. Um, Mustafa Ali, I truly believe that no matter what gimmick you give him, if given the proper time and booking, he can sell it. Um, and he's a great athlete. Ricochet, um, I would have him there as a heel. Um, I recently saw a match, which I highly recommend, Ricochet versus Will Offspray uh, in like an independent show. Amazing match. I was so shocked, but he's a great guy. Can use a little bit of work on the mic, but great athlete. Big E, I would have as my heel. I think that we truly need a monster, like a big guy as a heel, because we haven't had that in God knows yet when. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura, another guy I would have as a face, a Japanese sensation. I think he can do the bare minimum and still give you a great show. He can have a solid place in the show. He doesn't have to have 20 minute promos. He doesn't have to do all these backstage vignettes or whatever. Very simple. You have a guy step up to Shinsuke. You have a great match. That's it. Everybody's happy. I have Finn Balor as a face. I think with Finn, he can easily be there as a main event guy, but for the sake of having enough people for the list, Finn Balor, I think, can do it all. Um, then I have Kevin Owens as my random because Kevin has once again proven that he can go back and forth. Um, he can do anything. Very great athlete in the ring. Then I have, well, he's now known as T-Bar, but I'm going to go back to Dominic Dijakovic. Um, wow. He's a heel because uh, this guy was having great matches with Keith Lee when Keith Lee was still around in NXT. I think given the proper uh, character and booking, he can be a great athlete. Kind of like how you look at Austin Theory, fresh, young blood talent that just needs the right booking. Um, Then I have The Miz. We were just talking about him, obviously, as a heel. Because, again, Miz has been doing this for long enough. He can do anything. He can get some major heel. He can get the crowd going. So I need to have him there. Then I have Sheamus as a face. I think that if Seamus wasn't too busy with the gimmicks and the wardrobe and the slap him with this guy, slap him with that guy, he can he can have a solid place in the show like he did about a decade back. And finally, I would have Bobby as a face because, again, I think we need a dominant powerhouse as a face on, on your mid card who can potentially, I think you mentioned this, you can like kind of swap one or two of these guys to the, to the main uh, roster, or not main roster, a main card, and then maybe have them go back down to the mid card. But Bobby Lashley would be my final pick for that. And the whole point in this is that you don't need 400 people on yeah. your payroll. You can slim down, you can choose your, your, your minimum, and as long as you take that care and mo- and, and you do things with purpose, so you can make work. You, and you and I had a spillover of five. Yeah. Okay. That you legitimately care yeah. about this rock. With these 15 people, you can have a solid 18 months of WWE programming. Just with, with these 15 individuals. With ease. Maybe even more. So, but So, I kind of took a different approach in this where 
I wanted to leave out many people that have been on this roster for years. But some of them are still in there in this mid-round or mid-era or yeah. whatever. So this is my list. And I think at this point, as I'm reading it, it can go either or who's what or who's okay. who. But for faces, I would have Kofi. Um, he he deserves a single run. I would I would totally disavolve the New yeah. Day at this point because they're going to be remembered. They, yeah. they will it's no matter what. At this, it, point. It's, at this point, it's like, can we see Kofi get his time again, you know, and, for and who I think he that, used to be? Just real quick, I think that's one of the things that we don't get enough of is if you establish a tag team first, then you can get away with breaking them away and having them. Nation of Domination. Things. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Shinsuke, he, Shinsuke. He, he'd be one of my face mid carters. Um, yes, he's had the Intercontinental Championship. He's had the U.S. Championship. I didn't put him in the main event because he had his time. Unfortunately, they dropped the ball on him, but yeah. he could really reinvent himself and eventually work his way back up. Um, Austin Theory, I would have him as a face. I I give rid of this whole heel. Selfie, cell phone persona gimmick that I just don't like it. If if you rebrand him as like that fresh, hungry, like face that's coming off of NXT, like away from Gargano. Not to say that Gargano was bad, but like away from that stable that he wants to establish his own identity. I would like that, um, and I would have uh, Ali as um a, a baby face just because I think he, the guy's overdue. At this point, like he deserves a championship, whether it's underrated, personally, yes. in my opinion. That, that's he, how I see He has see a ton it. of charisma, and we just that he, he has never really gotten to demonstrate it. I think for a hot second before the Kofi stuff happened, Mustafa Ali was slated to face Daniel Bryan at Mania, but I think he came down with an injury, and they're like, Kofi's right there, yeah, you know, so. And there could have been an angle work between those two. I mean, that, easily you can't. I. I mean, some people would object to it that you prepare propel Ali that high so quickly, because what's the after yeah. effect? So for my heels, it'd be Ricochet. I would like to see like Ricochet develop like an ego about himself yeah. at this point. He has the talent. He has the wrestling capability. Let's add personality, ego. To it, uh, Xavier Woods. I would want him as a heel again. You break off the new day, one of them is a baby face, one of them is a heel. But let's have Xavier um, Woods display this okay, you crowned me the king of the ring, right? Kind of taking in the bear and the King Corbin effect, but like let Xavier Woods do because one, he even said it himself, like this is an honor he's always wanted. It's a dream. Yeah. A little bit more than a WWE championship. Okay. Sell us as to why you should be the king. Sell us why you are the best now. You yeah. know? Uh Veer. <laughs> wow. Um, but I I don't like this direction he's going in right now. I mean, yes. He's utilizing a veteran and and a, and a rookie, unfortunately, yeah. with Rey Mysterio and, and, Dominic. and Dominic. If you get Veer on his own, like actually have him wrestle, like actual mid carters, I think that could work out. I didn't know he was a pitcher for the the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah. He's a dual athlete. That explains it. it. It's crazy. But and apparently he's bulked way the hell up because yeah. uh, apparently he he was uh, about 150 pounds when he was a pitcher and now he's 256. So well, and then this is a surprise that I wrote him in Gunther. Gunther. Wow! But I would take him back to Walter. Walter, bring that NXT UK ego in, not do this whole F America thing, the you gimmick. know. Not help because obviously with this current gimmick, it's just ugh. yeah. Just make sure you keep him away from Nash Carter. <laughs> um, but I would want Walter to like just you know be dumb and be arrogant, kind of like Triple H was like with Hunter Hearst Helmsley esque. Like I, I'm I'm a Minus royal the British accent. Yeah, he's a very I'm a, regal German. Yeah, yeah. 
like proud, not yeah. I'm using the name of a racist character <laughs> from racist Germany. <laughs> Doesn't work. And then your randos, uh, Damian Priestley, because I, I don't like. I mean, I like that he's with a faction with Edge and Rhea. It's just, you know. Well, another case of we don't have nothing for you, so just put them all. We're filling together. the hole. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Alexander. Interesting. He, he, he could fit into a fit, maybe to a face. We've seen him as a heel with. Um, God, I forgot the name of their faction. Um, the Hurt. Business. The Hurt Business. Yeah. See him as a face for a while, or just have him there, and I would bring back our truth. But I want him completely away from this twenty four seven gimmick. He's not even chasing for the title; he's just there now. Yeah. Get him back to wrestling as a mid carder. Give him the Intercontinental Championship, but don't make him make it as a gimmick. Make him kind of legitimize it in a way like Cody would. Yeah. They they should have him get get Irish whipped into a uh, circuit breaker, and that fixes him, and then he's back to the way he was when he was tag teaming with Road Dog. <laughs> you mean K Quick? Yeah, <laughs> that was very K Quick. Oh my God! There it is. All right. Anyway, so then that brings us down I'm to sorry. the thinner categories. That was all of them, right? Yes. Yeah. That's yep. The... So that brings us down to the thinner categories where we only chose three tag teams. Obviously, you can do what we talked about with some of these mid-carters. You can partner them up, develop a team with them. Or you could have a couple more teams, but we're trying to keep it simple, stupid. Uh, so who would like to take it away on the, uh, on the tag teams? I'll, I'll take it away. Oh, okay. okay, go ahead. I think, I think you yeah, did it. Um... So for my ra- I'm going from random heel face. Okay. My random team because I just don't like that they put him with him. Gable and Otis. Just to get it out of the way. Thank you. Shush! Did you just shush? Shush! That? Don't shush. Shush! You see why I don't like this? It's actually kind of funny. At one point it is, but I, another is like, just stop. Well, again, stop. a case of someone taking something bad and making it work to a certain extent. Certain extent. Yeah. Uh, my heel f- tag team faction would be the Judgment. Or Judgment Day. Judgment Day, yeah. yeah. I just would like to just call him the Judgment, but whatever. Um, edge is very good at, you know, propelling. It's Edge. Talent. Yeah. And plus, he has tag team history. Yep. Very well established history, and of course, for my baby faces, the street profits. Fair because it. I am kind of finding it hard to believe that. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Angelo Dawkins. No, Montez. 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 <laughs> I can't picture him as a heel. He's yeah, trying he's a so little charismatic. Too hard. He's so charismatic. He's charismatic as a face. Yeah, like that's more believable to me. Not. As this heel, like, who's trying to be this badass. And this is like, no. Yeah, you, you'd, ha- right. you'd have to make him smarmy and Angelo Dawkins the, mm. like, intimidating one. But I think that's the only way you could really get yeah. away with that. But those are my three tag teams. Um, I had, uh, before, you know, this week, um, RK Bro. Um... And they're my my swaps because I feel like they could, uh, if they're on the same same wavelength, um, they could easily fluctuate between being a face or a heel. And uh, I mean, could you imagine Riddle as a heel? Uh, he'd have to be. It's it's tough. I think he could. He'd have to kind of lay off the stoner gimmick. While he was doing it. I don't want to imagine him, period. <laughs> you still have the grudge. Okay, uh, who's your heel tag team? Uh, my heel tag team, Ziggler and Rude. Because I like Dolph. Yeah. And I like Bobby. And uh, I think if they were a serious unit, then they could uh, carry the heel side of the division. I mean, at one point they were. They were kind of serious, but... Especially with Dolph's NXT championship run. Yeah. 
And then my face tag team, Street Profits. So you got to bring the swag. This, bring the smoke. Have all the smoke. You don't want the smoke. Riddle does. Um, <laughs> for my tag teams, uh, my random that I have, ironically, is Street Profits. Because I've said a few times throughout the course of history that so-and-so can't be a heel or so-and-so can't be a face. And they proved me wrong. So I would like to see the Street Profits be the random. They would be my first tag team. My heel, obviously, goes without saying, it would be the Usos. Um, I would break up the bloodline thing and just have the Usos do them. Because uh, I think that Usos, much like the New Day, are a staple. They've been doing this for years at this point. They prove that they can go from uh, face-painted faces to, you know, the... What do they call it? The penitentiary Uso lockdown gimmick. <laughs> they can make it work. Um, and obviously, as my face, my third tag team, I would have the New Day. Because again, another team that can do it. And actually, uh, when they turned heel the first time around, they actually were able to establish themselves as what they are now. And it was thanks to that heel turn. And then they became a face. And I think ever since then have not turned. So those would be my three teams. All right. Well, that brings us down to the complicated sections. Oh, God. So, at this point, we've crossed over to where we are in the, the women's roster. We, again, six singles star women and three women's tag teams. Um, honestly, the women's tag team is now the one that I'm most interested in, just seeing what the hell I did with mine. I didn't even realize we didn't even have a mid-card section for the women's. It's because there's not enough of them. Get it? Oh, I created a way for there to be enough. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Kamish, why don't you lead it off then? Yeah, Kamish. All right. I'm going to lead it off with the main eventers, your three faces and your three heels. Let's do it. Let's start with your baby faces. I think it needed to happen, like you said, after WrestleMania 38. Let's bring Becky back to being a face. Because I can't get with the whole Seinfeld shirt and this whole, like, overly excessive sunglasses gimmick anymore. I'm sorry, Dan. It's your girl. It's one of your 40 girls. But um, I just, I can't. I think that for everything that the man spent time building... Was destroyed by Big Time Bex. Was being destroyed by Big Time Bex, my opinion. Go ahead. No, I agree with it. Um, Asuka. Asuka. Um, I would have her as a baby face as well, just because it's like, Interesting. we've seen both sides. They're both, she can pull off both very well. Um, she was gone for like 200 plus days. Yeah. Um, so this is a toss up for my third. It'd be between Lacey Evans as a face mm-hmm. or Alexa Bliss. Lexi. Just because we've seen the Southern Belle, you know, we've seen that run. I think they were trying to rebrand her on SmackDown as, like, you know, salute military, to America, yeah. Amer- military face, which we should have seen, but we're going to see it on Raw as a heel, and I kind of don't like which it. Which kills it. Um, and Bliss, just because we've seen, you know, heel face, heel with uh, this weird co-faction with Bray that, unfortunately, Fiendish, Fiendish didn't work. Because they were going to pawn it off on her. But even then, they took it away. Yeah. And they repackaged her right now. She is a face, right? She is. But she's but like she, a mid-card or so. She's far. carrying that Lily doll. But I would rather see her as a main eventer. Like, get away from that whole time that she spent as a bully with the Raw Women's Championship. You know, to have her display it as, like, you know, as a baby face. Yeah. For my heels... Keep Bailey where she's at. I mean, yeah, I may be annoyed with the whole ding dong hello thing, but like, she's dominant. Yeah, I think we've waited years to see Bailey be more dominant and be more attacking towards what she wants. Uh, Raquel, yes, as a heel, whatever her uh, last name is next week. And this is also the toss up too between putting her as a main eventer and. Shayna okay. and Rhea. Just because one of the two can move down. But my thing is with those two is that 
Shayna pulls it off so well as the queen of spades, you know, like, I'm practically going to break your arm yeah. and you're not going to know it. And then with Rhea, we're seeing it with the Judgment Day so far, but I kind of would have wanted to see it better by herself at first. But it's like quickly like, oh, let's just put you with them. Um, but those are my main eventers. Whoever wants to take the strides next. So we have some correlation, some lineup here. Um, because my heels, I've got... I, I was flipping back and forth on a, on a couple of them. But my heels are Alexa Bliss, Bianca Belair, and, and Shayna. Um, I think all... I, I, Bianca is a curiosity for me. I would love to see her, because we've talked about this a little bit, where I was kind of thinking they might do a, a double turn with Becky and Bianca. And I thought that they were, that the arrogance of I'm the EST, I'm the best, could play as a heel character as well. And you could get away with that. Yeah. Bliss is, funny enough, I think she's been a heel more yeah. for a longer period of time yeah. than she has been a face. Yeah. But she's one of those charismatic people that you can get behind either way. Yeah. And even if she's kind of an a-hole, you can still be like, oh, it's Alexa Bliss. It's Lexi. Um, and then Shayna is, yeah, she's that intimidating anchor per, uh, anchor point. Now, the faces, I kept Asuka. I kept Becky. And then I put Liv Morgan up there. Oh. Because I think that Liv has sort of placed herself in a, in a position where she's sort of your Daniel Bryan. Of like the, the underdog of, who's proven that, that people, yeah, that people just want to get behind for yeah. the sake of getting behind her. Not, and it's not to say that she's not good because she is. She's solid. She's gotten better over the over the last couple of years. Um, and does she still have some some room to grow on the on the mic? Yes, but I think that she fits that category there. Very interesting comparison, to Daniel Bryan. Um, my, uh, women's, uh, main roster consists of, I'll do the heels first, uh, obviously Lexi, she's gotta be healed for the reasons that you mentioned, and, um, another one that I know Commission and I have advocated for for quite some time, Sonya Deville, um, I would love for her to have a good run and actually win a championship and not consistently swap between tag team with Mandy and then having a management position and then, you know, having something else. So you would take away this whole WWE official... Club. Yeah, which they did. Like, granted, they did. But I would love for her to have some great character work and just be a dominant uh, staple in the women's division. Uh, my last heel, and I just... I love her, and I think that she does better as a heel, is Io Shirai. Um, Io Shirai has been excellent in NXT, and just everything that I've seen, she's very athletic. Um little bit of a language barrier there god bless her but i think that with it's one of those cases where less is more yeah well it's also a case of less is more i don't i don't need every person out there for 20 minutes with the microphone in hand talking um so those are my heels my face is obviously i would want becky to go back to being the man or just having another gimmick where it's her as a face taking on all comers and not backing off like a coward um, Rhea Ripley as a face, I think, even though there are little essence of heelish things that she can do, maybe she can be an anti-hero, but I would love to see Rhea in there. And finally, Bianca. Bianca, I think, despite the fact that she was kind of splashed in everybody's face from obscurity, she's proven that she can do it. She can main event in WrestleMania, she can have a great match, she can have a great feud, and despite the fact that she got buried in 26 seconds at SummerSlam, thankfully, she was able to bounce back and you know, do it all over again. So that's my main women's roster. All right. Who wants to tag in for the tag team? A, do you get it? (laughs) I would say the shot should probably take this one because then it'll loop us back at the end and he can close out the show. Fair enough. We'll do a hot tag. I imagine you'll probably cut that part, but go on. (laughs) Probably won't. Um... (laughs) Okay, so tag teams for women. I actually had to alter this because of what happened recently with Sashi and Naomi. Yeah. So, Kamish, I told you this, and I think you might find this very interesting. So, 
For my face, um, I would actually have um, Dewdrop and Bailey together, and I was telling Kamish how I thought that would be an interesting Diesel and Shawn Michaels uh, dynamic, where you would have Bailey kind of the mouthpiece, like mouthing off, being a little bit cocky, and then you would have Dewdrop as the powerhouse, the backup. It sounds like a weird shot that you could order at the bar. A Dewdrop and Bailey's. Oh, a Dewdrop with Bailey's. <laughs> And by the way, if we can get her back to original name of Piper Niven, I would be... Uh, Ecstatic. A, yeah, exactly. Um, my second team that I would have as a heel would actually be Lacey Evans and Raquel, whatever her last name is, next week. Um, I think those two um, very powerful, strong, independent women, they have the stature, they have the size. Um, I would love to see them together. Um, and my final, which I would have random because this you can go both ways... I would have Liv Morgan, and then I would have Shotzi, Blackheart. Those two together as a tag team. Um, yeah, I think that once again, uh, Shotzi got the rug pulled out from under her early on, but I think especially with Liv kind of dwindling there, if you put these two together, have some good ring work and some character work, and actually have a good tag team, um, you know, they can thrive. So that's my team. Uh, hot tag to... Uh, so I'll, I'll go. Um, so my face team got messed up somehow. What did I do? Read his writing. Um, well, I've got it showing two R's right now, and I think I just forgot to switch. Rhea Ripley? Oh, that's what it was. Okay. So my, my flipping team, I went with Raquel Rodriguez. That's the last thing we're using. And Zelina. Kamish, I'm keeping my calm. Uh, but we would. She would not be Queen Zelina. She would be regular Zelina Vega Zelina and Vega. Raquel Rodri- Rodriguez. You gotta roll it. And I, I think that they would be a solid tag team because you've got the powerhouse. It's kind of like he the, looks like he's about to kill you right now. You know what? I welcome it. It's kind of like Dolph and Drew. Because you've got Raquel, who's your big imposing powerhouse figure, and you've got Zelina, who's your little mousy um, partner. So it's like the Sean and Diesel effect again. Yeah, and I think that they, I think they could flip because I know you don't like Zelina, but I think that Zelina could play a face. I think she has that capacity. Now my actual face team, um, I went strangely enough because I it was patchwork. <laughs> With Lacey and Xia Li. Oh, okay. interesting. Very interesting. And my thought process with this pairing is that it's like a uh, we're here to be to be the heroes thing. And I wouldn't want Z- Zaya like playing it up like I'm the protector of the family. Like mm. like she did when she debuted. But you've got Lacey who is your your military person. You've got Zaya who has that like I uh, the, the un, underdog stand up for the the little guy type of per, uh, stand up for the role, week. and if you put that together, I think that's not a bad pairing. And yes. then Lacey, I think, is um, she can be more of the voice of the team, the mm-hmm. voice of the voiceless. Yeah. Oh. And then my heel team. Uh, oh no, I guess I left that the way it was, didn't I? Whoops. Okay. Was uh, I? I would. Honestly, I would go with Mandy and Sonya, but I have, have Rhea and Sonya. And I think that it goes the two that kind works. Of dark, that broody works. types. Um, but you also, again, have the semi-genuine fighter in Sonya, because I don't know what her actual MMA record is. And you've got the big, uh, strong Rhea Ripley. And I think those would be three decent teams to build around. Tag? All right. So for my three tag teams in this women's division that is dwindled, I thought I would take a different approach into the random team just to bring one of these teams up, these makeshift teams that I would make. Toxic Attraction. Oh. Let's bring them into the mix already because let's bring Mandy back as well and you'll see why when I explain this. That's why I was asking if we brought anybody from NXT. Well, I, <laughs> the, I, well lack of roster has a lot to do with it. The man has a point. Um, For makeshift random team, it would be Xia Li and Shotzi. Just because you okay. would have 
two different dynamics that you can make, not forced to make to work, but they could yeah. work something or they would, they could be like that random makeshift multicultural team. team. Yeah. I mean, if we could have Tegan and Nas back, that would be, that would be great. <laughs> but we can't get what we want now, can we? Now, Forever. for this heel team, I would strip off her SmackDown Women's Championship and put her with the Queen of Spades. That's why Shayna was a toss-up between being a main event or a solo or being a tag team with Ronda. Just to put impose them as heels and impose them to like get Ronda to literally work on, I don't know, being a WWE superstar at this point. And to kind of reestablish the whole women's horsemen of MMA, at least two out of the four, you know, assert yourselves into a dominant team, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown in general. And to bring Mandy back into the mix, I would make Mandy and Sonya Team Fire and Desire back together as faces this time. Okay. Just to see, like, you know what, like... Sonia lost her official job. You know, she's kind of in a makeshift place of, like, what's happening to me? I need direction. And you have Mandy there, like, you have direction. Let's show the WWE the direction you once had while being there as well. And you could even have the built-in story of toxic attraction turning on her, which is what makes her go back to being a face. And I think that people naturally want to... Get, I think people naturally want to kind of give her props now because she was okay. Like, she wasn't anything to write home about before, but now she's found her legs. Now I they, think what it was is that yes. when she was, like, a heel in her run at first, it was kind of like, eh, you're not as impressive. And then with her Otis and mm. Tucker storyline, it was like, uh, what are we doing with you? Or anyone for that matter. Yeah, so... Let's bring you down to NXT. Let's have you form this uh, triplet team of toxic attraction. But to turn it that way would work. Now, you guys wondered how it would make a mid-shift team of mid-carders for mm-hmm. this women's division. <laughs> Here's the interesting point of it. three: These three uh, faces. Mid-carders with one of them with the potential to move up to main event status. And... So mid Carter for sure, Aaliyah and Carmella as your baby faces. Wow. I'm sure. I like Carmella as a face. She's a lot better to get behind and you get rid of Zelina. Yeah, if she, well, if Carmella's not screeching, she's And fine. she's not <laughs> making out with Corey half the time. Go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Liv Morgan as your face. I think she's established herself. As your mid Carter, who has the potential to move up as your main eventer who can win a championship. Hell, she's the if, person who, if the, if the sun and stars align, you can believe exactly. in picking up the win. Like the right woman, right place, right time moment. Yeah. Um, if we could, and this is an idea I kind of want to throw it, throw it in last episode. Why don't we introduce a a women get rid of the tag team championships and introduce a women's mid car championship, kind of yeah. like how AEW has their world championship, the TBS, and their TBS championship. championship. Yep. Um, they don't have a tag team championship. Now for your heels, uh, Dewdrop, for sure. Piper Niven. Uh, Nikki, not Nikki Ash. Nikki, Nikki Cross. Nikki <laughs> Cross. Let's get her back. To that evil, oh, you want to play? Jim Corner calls her Nikki S. Oh, he's an idiot. And let's reestablish her dominance just as this badass. Uh, Tamina. Wow. Okay. Uh, wow. The, you get her away from the idiot. No, because I thought you hated her equally. As no, me. no. I, I hate what they're doing with her. This whole... 24-7 run with Dana? Just, just stop already. Which puts my two randoms, Dana Brooke and the idiot. <laughs> but yeah, that, that would be my mid-carters of, the women, of this really trickled I'm down. I'm shocked. A lot of names in there I wasn't <laughs> expecting. So you have some mid-card uh, performers in there. I 
yeah, there's some wish list people like the Tegan Knox. I don't know what like I I don't think it was a thing where Buzzing she asked ass. for it. I think no. she just uh, yeah, she just got them with released. But it was also they had just they had just put those two together, or they had just introduced both of them. I think, yeah, and then they them. cut her, and you're and like, they what? Them together, and this is why your stuff is is shot. It's like See? a women's division is. Uh, but, Get it because it's shot Z. You really anyway, have to point it out. Go on. I think it's just the idea that it's like, okay, we had so much talent in NXT. It's time. It's their time to move up to the main roster. But we got no direction for them. Oh, it's just. Well, you know what the ironic part is that when someone from the main roster goes back to NXT, it almost seems like they're important again. Dolph Ziggler. Guy who was well, no, not Natty because she did that too, and nobody mm-hmm. cared. But no one still cares. Yeah, um, that, that's literally. Well, yeah, so it's the them. reverse of what I said. But if you look at someone like Dolph Ziggler, who was still in a tag team with Bobby Roode, and those guys really weren't doing much, I think I told you that first entrance of Dolph coming down the NXT arena, he felt important again. Like, oh shit, he's here. Yeah, but did he need a revitalization in his career? Well, I yes. think I think NXT. Um, is is still to some level, and I think it's people clinging to it. Still, sort of your indie darling, uh, stomping grounds, which yeah. is why Samoa Joe going back down there for as brief as it was, people liked it. Champa, uh, Gargano, um, undisputed everybody, um, Dolph. I know Dolph didn't really come from NXT. He, he was yeah. FCW, but. Um, yeah, he goes back, but people, like, the, the diehard fans are like, yeah, now he can Us. do something of value instead of just being, there. I mean, patchworked team. Like, honestly, if, if Drew hadn't, hadn't stepped it up the way that he, that he did, I'd put him instead of Rude, because that was at least a team that we got behind for the exact reasons we were already talking about. So... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, um, holes in the ship and WWE needs to find a way to patch them. And it seems like they're almost resistant. It almost seems like somebody is below deck with a drill, just adding more. (laughs) Vince, what are you doing? Put that down. Um, enough of that ship. But... The fact of the matter is we have highlighted that you don't even need 500 people on your roster. How many people is this out of morbid curiosity? That's 15, 16, 17, 18. I think we established like four, it was like 40 something. Five years of WWE programming with just these people. And then what do you do with the rest? Let you go. You, yeah. Do you let them go or do you... Keep them in a developmental territory. You let them go, allow for them to improve their craft like a Drew McIntyre, and, and then, then when let you them feel come like back and okay, claim one of the spots, exactly, because then by that point, someone is probably going to be one foot out the door, like a John Cena, like a Roman or a Sasha. Keep it together. Right? <laughs> I mean, it happened. We don't have the facts, okay? So just let it go. Is there something you're holding back? No. Potential rage? Well, sa- save it for the, uh, the the recording tag. Anyway, I think that brings it brings it home. Well, there you go, guys. We just discussed our ideal roster that we would have and implement in today's WWE system. Uh, but thank you for joining us for this very special episode, and we will catch you all next time.